All right, friends, this is the last lesson of the year. The last new thing I get to teach you, areas bounded by polar curves. Areas bound, you know, you know we had to get to area. You know we did. So how does this go? Let's take a look. No, let's take a look on a brand new slide. You imagine that there is some polar curve uh, where radius is a function of theta, and you're looking to find the area enclosed between some angles alpha and beta. When you do it in the traditional y is a function of x, you build rectangles and you say, okay, we're going to get infinitely many, infinitely small rectangles. But that doesn't work here because we're not going from left to right across the axis. We are sweeping from the pole around. So I need a way to say, OK, I'm sweeping from the pole around. And so what we do instead of using rectangles is we say, OK, here's a radial line. Here's another radial line. Let's pretend that in between those radial lines, we have a sector of a circle. Who's going to deal with a sector of a circle? And as we all know from pre-calculus mathematics, the area of the sector of a circle is one-half r squared times theta. Except that in this case, in this case, the area of the sector is one-half r squared and then the angle itself is really, really small. It's a teeny, oh, I put the T too early. It's a teeny, tiny change in theta. And so what ends up happening? Well, we get infinitely many, infinitely thin circular sectors, and we add them all together. And when we get infinitely many, infinitely many, infinitely thin circular sectors, we get an integral from an angle to an angle of one half r squared d theta. One half r squared d theta. Now, in almost all cases that I can imagine, r is a function of theta. And so we're just going to do an integral as if theta were our variable and be done. Let's take a look. Find the area of the region bounded by r equals 3 times 1 minus cosine theta. And we'll make sure we get a good picture in on this one. We're going to go polar mode. We're going to get a good look at 3 minus 3 cosine theta. There's your picture. I want that area. That's what I want. So how do I find the area of that region? Well, we know that the period of the trig function is 2 pi. So we know that if we sweep from... 0 to 2 pi, we're going to do pretty well. And we know that we're doing 1 half r squared d theta. 1 half r squared d theta. Integrate. So the 3 squared comes out, the 3 squared comes out to play. And I don't know how to integrate 1 minus cosine theta squared, so I'm going to stall for time. And get this thing. So now I have to ask myself, self, what is that? And I've got to go all the way back to my pre-calculus work that taught me that the double angle formula 
is that cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, which means that cosine squared of theta is cosine 2 theta plus 1 over 2. And so what I'm really doing is I'm doing 9 halves of the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 plus the 1 half from the double angle formula is 3 halves minus 2 cosine theta plus 1 half cosine 2 theta d theta. Just so we're clear, we broke this up into two fractions. The, the 1 half gets added to the 1, gives you a 3 halves. The 1 half cosine 2 theta pops up right over the R. I'm pointing to it. You can't see that. So what have I got? I've got 9 halves times 3 halves theta minus 2 sine theta plus a quarter, remember why it's one quarter, sine of 2 theta, why is that quarter there, from 0 to 2 pi. And so here we go. Sub in 2 pi, sub in 2 pi, sub in 2 pi, sub in 0, sub in 0, sub in 0. Oh, look. There it is. There it is. That's the idea. Um, hardest part of the problem, by far, is the double angle substitution for cosine squared theta. That is by far the hardest thing because it's, it's, it isn't calculus. It's trig. It's trig. So, if I had my calculator handy, I might ask my calculator to integrate one half times parentheses, 3 minus 3 cosine theta squared with respect to theta from 0 to 2 pi. And I get that answer, and that is roughly equivalent to 27 pi over 2. So no matter how you slice it, we are getting those answers. If your calculator active, well, then you flint the thing, and the points come from the setup 1 half r squared d theta. If you are, if you're cranking it out by hand, then you've got to know the double angle substitution. All right. Let's take a look. Find the area. Oh, oh, let's get the picture first. Let's get the picture first. This will be one. Oh, let's do it this way. Let's do two plus two. Let's even make it bigger than that so that it's easy to see. Three plus three cosine two theta and r equals three. This way we can at least see the picture. Find the area inside r equals 3 plus 3 cosine 2 theta and outside r equals 3. Inside the one, outside the other. Inside the one, outside the other. Inside of the, the lemnus gate, I think that's the name of it. Looks like so. It's a nice little ribbon. And outside of the circle centered at the origin of radius 3. So what we're really looking for is this area here. Now, I'm going to argue that we should find this area and quadruple it because it lets us work with first quadrant angles and symmetry gets us the rest of the way. 
the area that we want is four times. Well, how would we do this? We would have to know what this angle is where they cross. And then we would have to do an integral of one half red curve squared d theta, right? From zero to wherever they cross. And then we'd have to subtract out an integral from zero to wherever they cross of one half theta squared, I'm sorry, r squared d theta. So we'd have to play that game. So where do they cross? Where does red intersect blue? Well, red intersects blue wherever 3 plus 3 cosine 2 theta equals 3. So wherever 3 cosine 2 theta equals 0. So wherever cosine 2 theta equals 0 in the first quadrant. So that must happen at pi over 4. So this is a pi over 4, this is a pi over 4. So now, now I have 4 times, let's make it one big integral from 0 to pi over 4, of 1 half parentheses, parentheses, 3 plus 3 cosine 2 theta squared. In fact, let's square it to make life a little bit easier on us. 9, but that's going to cancel out with the 9 we're subtracting later, plus 18 cosine 2 theta plus 9 cosine squared of 2 theta d theta. So now what have I got? I'm going to factor out a 9 and the 1 half. So I've got 9 halves of 4, that's 18, times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 2 cosine 2 theta plus cosine squared 2 theta d theta. That's what I'm looking at. So this is not bad because, well, we can do this. We can actually do this. Um, the cosine squared of 2 theta, we're going to go back to the previous slide and we're going to recognize that if cosine squared theta is equal to this thing, then cosine squared of 2 theta, we just double the angles, that's cosine 4 theta plus 1 over 2. That's what we're going to recognize. Cosine 4 theta plus 1 over 2. cosine 4 theta plus 1 over 2. That's what this is. So what have I got? I've got sine... Oh, I wrote in the wrong color. Sorry, folks at home. Sine of 2 theta. U substitution takes care of me there. Plus, let's see, this is a 1 half, so its antiderivative is easy. And then this is a half cosine of 4 theta. So I've got to have a sine of 4 theta, but I've got a half and a u sub, and that's a 1 eighth from 0 to pi over 4. So it's time to just start substituting. Sine of pi over 2. 1 half of pi over 4, sine of pi, minus sine of 0, minus half of 0, minus sine of 0. So I've got 18 plus 18 pi over 8.
as you and I can clearly tell, the problem with these integrals is not the calculus. One half, one half r squared theta, one half r squared theta. That's not the problem with the integrals. One half r squared theta is easy. Trigonometry is hard. So I want to give you a couple of things to think about. Thing, well, let's let's give you an OYO to think about, something to do on your own. Um, looking for this big, th this guy right here is R equals 2 sine theta. And this cardioid here is R equals 2 plus 2 sine theta. And I would love to know the area in between. And that is something that we will conquer when we get back together in class tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. All right, everybody. Go get them. Think about how you would go at this. You would need an integral of 1 half r squared d theta for the outside curve and 1 half r squared theta for the inside curve. Could we use symmetry to help us out somehow? Got to think things through. Okay, see you tomorrow.